I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to part 5 and the final part of our CCNA CCNP Ether Channel webinar. What we just did at the end of part 4 is not only built the Ether Channel, but we also did some troubleshooting. We had some ports go into error disabled mode. We took care of that. We verified the Ether Channel, and as we can do in lab environments, we actually started tearing it down a little bit because it's a good way to learn in a lab environment to actually see what happens when things go wrong as well as when things go right. So what we've seen here are the two major benefits of an Ether Channel. The fact that we get to use uh, available trunks and available bandwidth that STP otherwise by default would not allow us to use, and secondly, we avoid the 50 to 55 second downtime when we have an ether channel because when a link goes down inside an ether channel STP recalculates the port cost but it does not recalculate uh, the actual path status. It doesn't have to go back from blocking, listening, learning, and then on to forwarding. So now what we need to do, my friends, is take a look at what happens when those trunks come back up. Because, of course, when you have networking software, it's going to let you know, hey, there's a problem with the trunk. You're not going to say, well, that's okay. I don't really need it. You're going to go fix it. You are going to go fix it, right? Okay. So as long as you go fix it, that's fine with me. Let's, uh, let's run that show ether channel summary command again. And you can see now that we've got uh, ports 10, 11, and 12 in there. But notice that a couple of them have a big old capital D next to them. And D stands for down, the capital D. So that is not a good thing. So we're going to bring those ports back up. But let me ask the entire group something here, all the Bulldogs out there. What do you think is going to happen when we bring the, those two ports back up? Are they going to go into error disabled mode like we saw earlier? Do we need to shut them down and then reopen them? Do we need to rebuild the ether channel? Do we need to put the port channel command back on them? You know, what do you think we need to do there? while I get to that point. While you're coming up with that answer, just uh, that's something to keep in mind with your switch ports is that they're open by default. Your Cisco router interfaces are closed by default. Well, let's take a look and do a no shutdown on 010. And I'll let the messages pop up, and there they are. And look at just that quickly even before we got the line protocol is up message that port had rejoined the ether channel because the cost had already dropped right back down to 12 it's just that quick you don't have to do anything else as long as you did not physically remove the channel group command from the interface you don't have to put it back on it's still there it's just the port was down so just that quickly the port rejoins or the trunk rejoins the ether channel so Let's go ahead and put 012 back in. And just that quickly, it took uh, just about the same amount of time because there you see the interface just opened up. I ran the command a little early. But by the time that command was run again, the cost has already gone back down to 9. So we know by looking at that cost that the ether channel, that all three trunks are back in the ether channel, but what do we always do? What do I always say? You trust, but you verify. And we can do that with show ether channel summary. And you can see that all three ports are back in the ether channel. And watch that uh, little d versus big D there when you're looking at show ether channel summary because the small d is for default port and the d is for down. And again, that's going above and beyond CCNA study, but I think it's a good idea to go above and beyond that. All right, so we have seen quite a few benefits here with Ether channels, and they're not difficult to build, but even when you run into them in production networks, it's not like you build them every day. You know, you build them once, and that's really all there is to it. But you've seen the benefits now in action, and you've seen also how to verify it, and also as a bonus, you got to take a look at how to take care of an error disabled port. So that concludes this particular webinar. If you'll stick around for just a moment, I just want to thank you for watching, I believe, all five parts of the recorded webinar. Uh, we are opening our CCNA Mastermind webinar on demand site the first week of January 2010. So we wanted to move our free content uh, to that as well. And I'm just going to keep that up there. But again, just a quick reminder. 
That's also where you can see all five parts of the webinar. We're also going to have them on the main website at thebryantadvantage.com. And I do invite you out to the Bulldog blog. We've got plenty of exciting new features coming out in 2010 to help you get Cisco certified and also Windows Server certified uh, on the way. We're also going to have some additional free on-demand webinars in addition to the Ether Channel one. We'll have one out on Frame Relay as well as you being able now to see the full 25 to 30 hour CCNA Mastermind on-demand webinar on your schedule instead of mine. You'll be able to access those videos online 24-7 uh, starting in January. Again, thanks for taking the time to come to the webinar today. I certainly appreciate it. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you at the Bulldog blog.